Hey everyone, this is Yen from Devolutions with another Remote Desktop Manager Pro Tip. Now this tip is actually part of a series of tips. We're gonna do a three-part mini series here on VPNs. The first one today has to do with just creating a simple VPN entry and then pointing a remote session to that VPN entry so that when you double click it, it opens up the VPN behind the scenes, it does its little magic, and then you can launch your session without having to really think about anything. The second video will have to do with uh, what if you want to have multiple remote sessions all launch that same VPN? Well, how do we do that? And what's the most efficient way of doing it with Remote Desktop Manager? The last video in the series is the one that's gonna kind of encapsulate all these features, but we're gonna give some extra features like what happens if you open multiple remote sessions and you close one. Well, do you want your VPN to close at the same time or do you want it to stay open till the last session is closed? And we'll do that using a VPN group. All right, so let's take a look at my screen. So I have Remote Desktop Manager open here. First step is to create a, a VPN entry. So you're gonna click a new entry and then go to VPNs and then select the VPN that you are using. We have a wide variety. Now you might say, hey, wait a second, Yen, you said you were uh, very adaptable and customizable, but I don't see my VPN. Well, don't worry about that. Just go on to the add-on manager down here and then you can go to VPN and you'll see we have a whole bunch of different VPNs listed as well here. Okay, so now that we got that set up, uh, let's go ahead and uh, go into the VPN properties. Now I'm a single user, so I'm actually manually typing my username and password. I could inherit my credentials from another credential entry linked in my vault, which could be very helpful as well. So I don't have to actually hard code it in there. I can inherit it from a folder above, which will actually use that feature a little bit more in the second video that I'm gonna do. Uh, or you could put no credentials and then the pop-up window will open and then they'll have to manually type your username and password uh, every single time, okay? Uh, now it also depends on if you're in a team environment. If you're in a team environment, you may have to actually have linked uh, credentials so that they use those to open the VPN because obviously you don't want everybody using the same credentials. I'm gonna go ahead and just hard code it in there just for this example. Uh, you can say always ask for password, automatically accept certificate, automatically delete profile and close, uh, and uh, 2FA. I have 2FA on mine, so I'm going to have my handy dandy phone ready with my 2FA app uh, uh, loaded so that I can um, put in that six digit code uh, when it prompts for me. So there, there is going to be some typing to do, but I'm not going to have to type in my username and password everywhere. Uh, I'm just gonna have to type in that code every time I wanna use the VPN. Now, there is this wait delay. Now, what is this number? Um, this is a pop-up window that's gonna kind of put the session on standby while this VPN is trying to open. Just so you know, if you put negative one, okay, this is inherited property from the file options types menu that is in Remote Desktop Manager that's set by default. Now in the advanced tabs, this advanced tab is available anywhere you see the VPN properties. Okay, you can specifically uh, tell your data source to go offline once you connect to your VPN. Uh, and you can also make your data source go online after you disconnect from your VPN as well. Uh, you can actually close connection after a certain amount of time. So if you wanna give a time limit of 30, 45 minutes, one hour, uh, you can use an external adapter to detect a connection. You can even detect reach, reachable host while you're waiting to see if it's accessible. And then you can tell it uh, VPN reconnect mode. The default is uh, reconnect VPN, but you can have to have, leave the VPN open. And then after you execute the VPN, you can even put a second delay. There might be a time frame window between when you actually open the session, when the VPN actually opens and connects, that you might actually have, have, have to have another time frame after that. Well, you can set that here as well. If you do 20 seconds here and 20 second window, you're gonna get two pop-up windows. The first one will pop up as soon as you run the session and then the second one will be as soon as it executes as well, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go into this actual remote session that requires this VPN to access. So obviously if I click open, it's not connected whatsoever to the uh, network, so it will not be able to access it, that's normal. Where do I set up the VPN settings? Well, I'm gonna go to properties I can see this VPN SSH gateway option here. Now, when you go to the first tab, you'll see there's three tabs on the top. There's the VPN uh, gateway tab, there's a setting tab and advanced tab. 
Now, be default, it always defaults to Microsoft VPN. Well, you're gonna have to go down and select which VPN you're using, okay? So in my case, I'll show you, there's two ways I can do this. Um, I could actually go Sonic Wall Net Extender, go in here, manually type the information and so forth. The only problem about that is that's very uh, hard coded, meaning if I change my uh, properties, my username and password, and I have this on multiple sessions, I'm gonna have to do it everywhere. And I don't like that. I like to have one VPN entry for each VPN that I'm using. So I'm actually not gonna use this Sonic Wall Net Extender type. I'm actually gonna use the session type and I'm gonna point to that VPN session uh, that I'm using. So I'm gonna go here into the setting tab, then I'm gonna go here and select my Sonic Wall VPN entry. So there you go. Now, this advanced tab, thirdly, is the same information that was listed um, in the VPN entry. So you can actually set information here on each session or on the VPN entry itself. Now I like doing it on the VPN entry, but some people like to override the, set the settings right here as well. Now there's different connect methods. So not enabled means that um, if I go here, you'll see here there's no VPN available. So if I click, there's no way to open my v VPN unless I manually open my VPN here, then go back to the session and try to run it, okay? Always connect means that every time you open up this session, my Windjammer 21 here, it will always try to open up the VPN. Well, that's nice, but if it's already open, why go through that whole processing uh, power just to do it again? I mean, this could be pretty hefty if you have multiple sessions. You do, do you really want every session to open up the VPN every single time, uh, whether it's open or not? Okay, so we don't wanna do that. Connect manually means uh, you're gonna, if you select this, what's gonna happen here is you'll see now I have, I can open and close my VPN manually. Now, if I click open session, it'll still give me the same error message as earlier. So I'd have to actually open the VPN, then actually then open the session. So that's a different option if you're looking for that. Uh, the third uh, third one here is uh, connect if unable to ping or port scan. This is one of my favorite ones because it actually is gonna ping the server. If it's not available, then it's going to try to open the VPN. If it is available, it's not gonna open the VPN and it's just going to uh, open the session, which is very helpful. Inherited means that it's gonna grab whatever properties that are set in the VPN SSH gateway tab in the folder above. We'll see that in the next video that I do. Ask for confirmation means there's gonna be a little pop-up window that says, would you like to connect, yes or no? And connect if network adapter not found. This is where you set a network adapter depending on your use case. And then prompt if unable to ping and port scan is kind of like this connect if unable, but it's gonna also pop up a window saying, are you sure you wanna connect? Yes, and then it's gonna say, okay, now we're connecting, okay? So um, I'm gonna go connect if unable to ping or port scan. On the close tab, this is gonna this is gonna have to do with what happens when this specific session closes. I exit out of it, I close the server, I close the R, this RDP session. What's gonna happen? Well, do I want the VPN to close? Then this would be on session close. So when I close this session, the VPN will close itself. I could say manually later means that it'll leave the VPN open, but then I can hit that little close VPN option beside the session uh, right here and close it manually later on, okay? Or I can confirm disconnect and say, and have it prompt a window say, you're still connected to the VPN, would you like to close it, yes or no? So that's kind of a nice option as well. So I'm gonna, let's just go ahead and do that one. All right, and then VPN group, that's gonna be in the third video, we'll talk about VPN group. So we're not gonna deal with that now. Then here, you can actually pass specific credentials as well uh, to that VPN, and this may be helpful if you're in a multi, uh, or team environment where you want to pass very specific credentials as well. Now let's try running this session. So I've got my phone ready. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up so I have everything ready to go. Okay, and now I'm gonna click open session. You'll see here that I get my little, uh, my little pop-up window will pop up open here and I've got this, and I've got this little timer going on. So I gotta hurry up here and I'm gonna put in my code. and hit enter. And now this is irrelevant here, but now it's gonna try to open the session, but notice it opened. 
And then you can kind of see that on the left-hand side because here my sonic wall is open and it's connected and my uh, Windjammer 21 is open as well. So now if I'm done working, I'm gonna click close and then it's gonna pop up and say, oh, do you want to close the VPN, yes or no? And then once I do yes, it'll actually release it. Uh, I can see down in Windows, it released my VPN, so I'm no longer connected. And now I'm free to go back to what I was doing before I was connected to the VPN. So I hope you see how easy it was to set up a VPN to through an entry so that once you open that entry, it opens up the VPN and you can do your business. And when you close that entry, your VPN closes uh, with no issues whatsoever. And there was a minimal amount of uh, interaction. I just had to put my 2FA code and that was basically it, okay? Now in the next video, we're gonna see how to run multiple sessions via the same VPN using inherited properties. Now we hope you enjoyed this video on VPNs. It was highly requested one. Uh, if you like the these types of videos, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This will give us a, a heads up and let us know that you enjoy this content. So we'll keep coming back with more. Thanks again and have a great rest of your week.